Greetings once again, everyone. <laughs> um, so, today we're going to have at this piece and, uh, and see how far we get. I can make no promises as to whether I shall complete or not, but you never know. You never, never know. Right. Um, I'm just going to be working up this section down the side here with my yellows and uh, marigolds and umbers and so on. Um, so I just want to get that that going. Meantime, actually, I want to start with a little bit of this more kind of vibrant yellow. I want this lovely icy, icing a light contrast with this piece to, to shine on through. Couple of different light yellows, lemony type yellows. Again, I'm being very loose and and expansive with my graphic treatment. Because there is a lot I want to leave to the imagination for the eye to to make up itself to interpret to imagine so in this sense it's quite an emotive sort of piece and as I mentioned during the last session, um, I'll be using my eraser quite a lot for for blending, etc. Yesterday we just got the basis going, so I'm going to continue that, and then and then start to work a little more finely so this is at, at that point things slow down dramatically so that then it starts to take time at this point it's been it's been quite rapid in progress because of the as i said the expansiveness of my <clears throat> graphic treatment and I'm working quite quite quickly here. But that will change. <clears throat> that will most certainly change. Uh, Right, let's select some other colors here to start to work in.
So bringing in a few uh, scratchy sort of browns and terracotta just for a little bit of variation and also some contrast and, and depth. some of the darker brown where's that where's that where's that ah come on show yourself fool there you are here and there as well just to just for that catching that late afternoon sun So I really want to lay down as much, as many layers and different colors, but within this similar range or hue, um, hues as, um, as I can. Um, Let's start working in a little bit of uh, eraser. No, first of all, what I want to do is just bring in a little bit more charcoal here. And before I start introducing any um, compressed charcoal, which will be more kind of sparsely used but to create more detail because uh, I don't because the, what the what the compressed charcoal tends to do being so very very black uh, it tends to create a bit of a dead zone if, you, if, if, if there's too much of it a bit of a hole um, so I don't want that to be too overpowering so I'm going to use as much of a charcoal as I possibly can for these deep shadow areas. A 
as I feverishly searched for this particular green that I had spotted. Ah, there it is. Okay. Right, let's tackle this with a little bit of green now. Deep olive green. Or forest green, I don't know what you would want to call it. As I've mentioned before, I'm not one much of... <laughs> having, not, having not been formally taught in terms of uh, fine art, etc., I'm not very much au fait with the correct colour terminologies etc and what they're called and how they're referred to and I just use whatever I need whatever I'm called to use and call it what I will bottle green forest green vegan poo brown etc uh, yeah um, whatever I want to, whatever I choose to call it is what it is. <laughs> so, this is, is a kind of an olive, a dark olive and forest green. So, I'm going to just bring it in in this bottom, in this bottom corner here of this green wedge. And further out as well. And of course, um, this this piece is oh, what? How many times larger than my than my reference image? I would say what, sixteen times larger. From A five to let me just think. Yeah, sixteen. No, I don't. Something like that from A5 to A0, roughly. I'm not much of a mathematician. <laughs> Especially when I'm thinking creatively. I, yeah, trying to, do, trying to do sums in my head is a little, little bit of a challenge. 
at this point. So, uh, anyway. It's actually 32, mind you, if I think about it, is there are 32 A5 sheet sizes in an A0, and this is just shy of A0, so, yeah. So I'm working on this, um, I still want to maintain the kind of, um, sort of rough integrity of the, of my, of my very quick sketch and I did the sketch in about 15 minutes 20 minutes um, so I want to maintain that lovely um, graphic appeal of the sketch which I can safely show you at this point um, which I use for for reference um, so that's a little same I've used the same materials here um, just on white paper, as I, was, uh, as I was explaining in the last session, it's hanging on a, <laughs> on a, on a pants hanger. Anyway, so that's roughly 32 times larger than um, this piece that I'm working on. But you'll, as you might have seen, the the uh, the rough, lovely rough strokes of the small one is something that I'd like to kind of recreate here in a way so therefore I have to be much more expensive with my with my treatment which is exactly what I'm doing and then and then where I can't actually bring in some subtle detail um, with the small piece I can do so here like on the mountain in the distance just bring in that little touch of the few nuances of shading and 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 hues of color etc um, then I can do on this larger scale but where there's this large field um, I, I I want to maintain that that very loose appeal rather than trying to depict each blade of grass it's because this is a mood the whole piece is a is emotive so that it, 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 it and I want to maintain that emotiveness without getting too caught up in in trying to replicate a, a photographic image almost I'm not into that it's not my thing um, what I'm about with my art is 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 mood is emotion is feeling and and what it evokes in in you the the uh, the viewer the observer so i'm merely energizing this piece with what i feel what i feel like standing here in this field and, and gazing out over the pastures towards the in the in the distance um, the mountain in the distance um, not much of a mountain really but it, 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 it is it is a very dominant ridge skyline for the entire region for miles and miles and miles around And from up top there you can see for 50 kilometers or more quite easily the entire Midlands so uh, those of you who are familiar with the Kwazulu Natal Midlands um, 
you can see inflow sound from from uh, oh from Howick side, Midmar Dam side, um, even further 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 back east than that, and then from the top side you can see it from from Nottingham Road, Fort Nottingham. Um, yeah, so it's a very dominant icon of the region that very few people actually notice. <laughs> it's just always there, right in the distance. Um, and very few people actually even know what this, what this mountain is called and why it was named such, um, which is an interesting thing. Um, it just shows how we tend to just go about our lives and our business without actually really taking it all in. So my mate, uh, Pat Flanagan and myself, um, began this these series of of photographic expeditions, if you want to call them that, um, early on in twenty nineteen together. Um, Pat Pat is a a, a photographer, a friend of mine I've known for many years, and. Uh, and we uh, decided one day to to just drive up into the Midlands and from Durban and uh, just with the sole purpose of of creativity of gathering photographic imagery. Pat, from a photographic perspective, and myself from an art. Um, fine art perspective. Um, and that's what we did. So we observed everything very differently from, from if it was a, uh, uh, simply going up to visit the Midlands and to just have a picnic or do a Midlands meander is what they call it. Um, just visiting different places and, uh, and, uh, outlets and little shops and what have you that are all a, a scatter throughout the region. Um, instead of doing that, we were purely focused on on observing creatively. So whatever took our fancy, whatever shot looked right, we would stop immediately, get out the car and start taking snaps. So. From that act, from that perspective, the uh, uh, the mountain, this Inclosan, took on a great deal of meaning for us. Even though at that point, at first, we didn't know what it was called, if, even if it had a name. Um, and uh, and yeah, we found this wonderful, wonderful, very appealing looking. Uh, landform um, and uh, took loads of pictures and oh, of course of, of, of the whole area we spent we came up early in the morning one day and I think we by, by, by sort of 10 o'clock in the morning um, most of the light was bad um, and uh, so then we and then we headed home again. But uh, it was only when on meeting uh, with our other friend Barry Darnard, who's also a photographer and and uh, creative peep, um, is when and he lives in the area. He lives up the Dogle Valley. Um, in fact, <laughs> Barry lives just up here through the trees. Um, and it was him that told us about about 
intro sign, its name, why it was named such, and um, and uh, that, that's then it take, took on a whole new meaning. And so every time, every time I visit, either of us visit this area, it's always, this becomes a, a focal point for us. However, now, since I think 2020, Pat and his wife Jenny have, have moved up to this area, well, to Howick, and, and now live there. Um, I'm still a city slicker. Um, and, uh, but still love the, absolutely, you know, am inspired by these, by this area, this particular area of, of, of this wonderful country. I mean, we've got such a, such a uh, plethora of wonderful vistas, landscapes, seascapes, you name it. It's a, it's a creative paradise, but uh, for me, for some reason, it's the Midlands that, that, that attracts me the most. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> so I have a rather a fascination. Well, not only that, but with the sea as well, of course. So, uh, of course, I can't have both at the same time. So, uh, it's a case of choosing my, choosing my times to, to visit either or. So, in depicting this piece now, this, this field, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six or seven different greens. Um, I've got a, a two different, three different, four different kinds of yellow, um, a marigold. Um, so, yeah, I'm really working it in quite a lot because important to even though I'm working so loosely um, it's the, it's that it's that depth of color the contrast the strokes that I'm using etc that actually create the interest and and uh, and keep the attention um, I'm uh, being remiss of this particular spot down here, the, the end of the page down here. To just bring it in a bit here. Once again, I do not wish to rush this piece. So we're halfway through now, um, halfway through the session, and it's looking like I shall, after all, need one further session. So, uh, yeah, just to give it its, give it its head and let it just pull together nicely without rushing it, without leaving it perhaps somewhat unfinished. It is going quicker because I don't need to introduce any any acrylic to this. Uh, it's not necessary. Acrylic, I usually only use what, and that's for seascapes, and that's just to create those very, very intense, bright highlight, highlighted whites, um, which I don't have any of here, really.
I might, what I might do is have a little bit of, just a touch of detail of, of, of uh, uh, in terms of the, <clears throat> um, the strands of uh, grass, etc., um, down towards this very near foreground. Um, but other than that, I'm just using, with my eraser, just using this wonderful little tool to to blend and to create texture because you must know that this grass is is all sort of interwoven it's not all just one lovely direction it's all interwoven it's very thick grass um quite long as well you know that each each but it's lush rich obviously in nutrients and what have you um, that the cows the cattle dairy cattle love so it must be maintained throughout the year uh, winter or not um, so depending as well because when when it goes and so, so here's an example of where it's I suppose maybe not irrigated I don't know um, but but over here we have this this uh, much drier grass but it's still lush and it's used then for you know when these fields are allowed to grow and then they they would cut them and then that becomes hay I guess so uh, but it is a particular type of grass and I'm not sure I'm not sure what it is but it's not indigenous of course it is a very much an agricultural grass so very much used I would imagine for because I haven't seen this kind of grass in uh, in the bush um, ever so uh, you know it's it's incredibly spongy to even to sit on uh, it's lovely stuff and i would imagine quite hardy as well because uh it seems to you know we we, we of course in winter in this in this region we it gets pretty cold and you get uh you get frost very occasionally, very occasionally. I mean, once in once in a, a decade or two, you might get some snow, but uh, a light dusting of snow. Um, so it has to maintain, withstand the, these kinds of quite cold conditions at times. Uh, but the soil in this area is very, very rich, of course, and so there's a lot of agriculture. There's a lot of farming, dairy farming, cattle farming, um, um, not, not, not in terms of, but mostly uh, dairy actually, um, dairy and then forestry, pine and eucalyptus, so there's some, there are some very large dairies out this way, in the region so they have a lot of grazing ground for for them and I guess they graze their cattle on different fields according to the growth etc I think this particular farm has in the region of I think it's a thousand a thousand cattle um, so it's got many fields just like this that came across a, a handful of 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 cattle on this on this particular field but uh, obviously they, they they spread them out
Yeah, so this is going to take now quite a bit of work. As you can see, um, I need to go through the entire piece like this and just creating these, this texture, this wonderful texture that the grass has, or trying to emulate the texture a little. Now I'm going to introduce, if I can find the damn thing, a little bit of, yeah, here we go. So now I'm going to be bringing in my compressed charcoal, which is much darker. I mean, you can already perhaps see what even these little few little light strokes that I'm using here. It's very dark, so I have to be really tentative with my strokes, not push too hard so that I don't, so it just builds up in strokes rather than in smudges. And then I can integrate using my eraser, some of these dark shadowy patches in the grass, and this grass is long like I said, so you've got quite a Quite a variation in, in terms of contrast, etc., as well. time. Coming up for 20 minutes. Left. So I'm going in all different directions. Just building up this contrast, this darkness, little by little by little, stroke by stroke. And then after that, I'm going to be using my eraser once again. So just to integrate it once more. So this requires quite a bit of time. Just slowly building up the, the contrast, the form, or rather the depth of depth of field, etc. Um, just so that it's not a, it, it's not sort of flat the grass. Look. Even if it's got mul multiple colours, it's not flat looking. It's like you can see into it. And, and so on. So for that, I need contrast. And I shall even be bringing in some white pastel to uh, to work that up a little bit more as well. Because of course you've got little spots of highlight reflected sun off the blades of grass as well. So yeah. A 
lot of work and all these long ridges of or, 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 or little troughs of perhaps uh, you know of long shadows that little shadowy areas because this field is not smooth like I was mentioning during the last session um, the, the ground has been rained upon turned into mud trodden on by cattle so it's very higgledy piggledy um, to walk on it to walk on this <laughs> these fields can be quite treacherous <laughs> And in between, sometimes you've even got sort of little, little shrubs of nettles, and goodness me, it's it's uh, for the for the human being, it can be <laughs> can be quite a treacherous place. Um, but obviously, for the cattle, it's wonderful for grazing and comfortable if they choose to lie down as well comfortable for me to lie down, quite happily do so. And also you use some fairly soft but long strokes here and all have to be short little strokes because this can just get some of these nice long streaks course this field further down um, has got quite a few uh, little outcrops of uh, little rocky areas as well as uh, loads of uh, these quite short stunted um, weeping wattles not weeping willows weeping wattles but they also are quite willowy looking um, in that they, they sort of do this sort of uh, the same weeping sort of action as the spindly little branches and what have you, but very gnarled as well. Um, so they look old, they're perhaps not so old as one imagines, but uh, um, and then they sort of seemingly die off in winter, and so you've got these very stark looking trees. Um, with no leaves or very few leaves and uh, it's quite an unusual, it takes, the, the, the landscape takes on quite an unusual appearance, almost extraterrestrial <laughs> at times. And the next, one of the, one of the next pieces that I'm going to do is, is, is yet another piece with these, uh, with these weeping wattles and um, where they appear to be dancing together. Um, I just I do want to I do want to try to recreate that kind of appearance. You know, almost a macabre look that these trees have.
but not for this piece, of course. So even though the saw trick is fairly simple in its in its composition in its subject, it's quite straightforward. Um, there is quite a lot going on. Subtleties. Is uh, this sort of angle of of the uh, of the um, Kind of trajectory of this of the shadows, etc. Um, and there's yes, yeah, there's little subtle details and etc. Details that aren't details. If you know what I mean. So, what I was saying much earlier, I was speaking of this, 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 this first visit with, with Pat up to this area. Not that it was the first time that I've ever been up here, of course, I've been many, many times over the, over the decades. But, um, but with that first one, it heralded a, a different way of, of observing, of looking, of listening um, to what I had previously become accustomed to, and and it and it it actually sparked off a series of visits along the same lines, and uh, and uh, so every time now that I go up here, I, I I observe differently, and I'm always looking for new angles and new lighting and uh, new stories. Um, so that's why I said, you know, if you if you actually you, you need to stop stop and take pause in order to see what's really going on, and then when you realise that it's not it's never the same, it always changes, it's always it's always in flux. There's uh, new new crops new colors, new patterns to the landscape um, and they change every season. And it always fascinates me. We see so much more and, and, the, and the, that kind of, those principles, the, 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 how we observe um, has helped me immensely uh, because I observe from a perspective of how it makes me feel rather than just re just recording what I see. I actually take a step back and observe how it makes me feel. And that's what's made a huge difference in the manner in which I interpret, not only artistically, but in the manner in which I interpret life and living. And that's what I like to share with my being the expression artworks, uh, art, uh, art workshops, um, is, is interpretation, how we interpret, how we see things, how we, how we, uh, how we do life. So changing people's perceptions of that and into how do I be life rather than do it. We're so busy doing, doing, doing that we lose sight of how we should be being.
this rough race of life, etc. And uh, and that's become important to me to share that that to share perspectives to share the way I see things and how it's impacted my life and how it can impact others just by shifting the the manner in which we observe the manner in which we listen so it's given rise to both those it's given rise to those workshops the, uh, the being the expression workshops as well as as well as my um, the art of listening so it's been just from that little visit that first visit came transformation for me but real transformation um, such that every time I visited many times again with with all of this in mind it's made a huge difference to me huge huge difference Right, I'm going to start and take this a few stages further tomorrow, but start introducing some of this sort of terracotta, which is the as if the sun is just catching certain spots on the on the far distant landscape and uh, and bringing that in a little bit. So. Yeah, so that's going to be my objective for tomorrow. As I complete this piece. So just, just honing up the subtle contrast, and I can't make it too dark because this is in the far distance, and those sort of I want to keep those purpley tones, and yet still enough. It's not that far enough that I can't see some of the colour of the of the uh, of the landscape. So I want to bring in some of these, also these terracottas, etc., and just blend them in. Reds and so on, which I'll do tomorrow. But uh, just to get that that ball rolling for now, almost out of time. Um, a couple of minutes left. See now this 
this kind of level of work I wouldn't really be able to achieve quite as nicely as I would if it was half the size. And this is why I chose to afford this piece its larger expression. I want to bring in some dark blue as well here. Weird as that. Weird as that. Uh, Always having to hunt for these damn colours because they are quite elusive. Let's bring in some of that one. There we go, there's something darker. This is much more of an indigo. Right, anyway, um, that's enough for the time being, I think. Let me see a little bit more here. And as I say that it's enough, so I continue, don't I? <laughs> and it's difficult to, to set my pastels down now. However, with the... Because I'm using pastels, and they are essentially blunt, they're not sharp, the level of detail that I can bring in is 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 is, uh, is greatly reduced and therefore I have to supplement that with the the appearance of detail um, rather than actual detail so in other words leaving a lot for the mind the viewer the eye to make up uh, to fill in the rest of the of the context of the story of the of the of the tale that is unfolding here whatever it might be so yeah i think we have done enough for today so uh i shall complete this piece tomorrow and yeah look forward to that it's been fun a lot of fun so far so good folks so Thank you for joining me once again and uh, welcome to any new uh, subscribers or any new visitors and if you are just a new visitor who's, who's happened to to land on my on my channel then please do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you're if you're that interested uh, to see any further notifications to uh, whenever I load up a new a new a new session um, and uh, yeah thank you for bearing with me in my mental meanderings um so yeah have a fantastic day further and in the meantime be good be kind be gentle be caring be loving etc etc um and uh, and i bid you oodles and doodles of toodles so see you again on the morrow and uh, thanks for joining folks um be good and uh, have a beautiful day toodaloo and don't Forget to doodle.